Merry Christmas! Hey guys, you're watching the Odo Show live Christmas party. Stay tuned and you could win some presents from Odo Band. Spread some Christmas cheer and hit that like button. And show us some love in the comments. What's your favorite thing about Christmas? Tell us about it right now in the comments. We want to hear from you. Now grab a mug of hot cocoa, put on your comfiest PJs. The show starts now. Welcome to the Odo Show. Busting, cleaning, myths and misconceptions. Here we go. Brought to you by Odo Band. Here are your hosts. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Odo Show live Christmas party. Guys, we have been listening to Christmas music all day. We've been decorating. We are ready to get our Christmas on and we are starting our holiday season right here with you guys. We've got a whole festive lineup planned for you. We're going to have uh, a cookie showdown that you guys are going to get to vote on and we're going to be talking about our favorite things about Christmas. Now we want to know, what are your favorite things about Christmas? Tell us about Right now, we're watching them live, and we want to hear from you. And you may be selected for some Christmas goodies, like our Oda Band's Six Cent Sampler Gift Set. Now, yeah, say that three easy times for you fast. to say. <laughs> you know those big gift sets that have got like the the really cheap summer sausage and the plastic <laughs> cheese in it. This is our version, but ours is actually cool. <laughs> You'll want this after that. Yes, yeah, remember all that, we eliminate odors. You're gonna need these. So we're already getting some comments. And you know, I love the Christmas season. Apparently, you guys do too. There's always certain things that you love about the season that make it Christmas. Like, what is your favorite thing about Christmas, Val? I just love the the, the Christmas spirit that it seems to just get into everybody. I mean, you just you, you go out in public and, you know, you say hi to people that you wouldn't normally say hi to or, you know, is, share a smile. It's really touchy-feely and deep. I feel kind of bad. I was just going to say presents. <laughs> I mean, you know, free stuff, right? Well, you know what? That's legit. Well, right. So, that is legit. So, you know, like, when you were a kid, did you have a favorite present from your childhood? Yes, yes, what? it was a, it, it was a bicycle. Mm. The, the, there was two girls up street up the street that I played with, and uh -huh. they were sisters, and they were bragging about the fact that they were going to be getting three speeds for Christmas. You Christmas know? So we brag, were like upgrading. Form. We were at that age where we needed to you okay. know, get a bigger bike, and so I I asked for a three speed. I, I, Christmas morning comes, there's not a bike under the tree. It's, it's pretty easy to see there. there's no bike under the right, tree. Right, right. And I'm like, oh, I was uh, just like gutted. So at the, after all the presents were open and everything, well, my brother-in-law happened to, you know, say, you know, I need, you know, there's something out here on the porch. And I go out there, there's my bike. And awesome. it wasn't a three-speed. It was a five-speed. Oh, two extra five speed. speed. Take That's that, right. kids, up the That's lane. That's right. So I won up them. Thanks to Santa. And now uh, you got the Christmas brag. I did. Uh -huh. I did. So that was that was you know really your, special. Your big to me. season there. Yep. S Santa listened. Santa listened. Now see, I don't know. To be honest, I said presents, but I don't have like a specific present from childhood that that is my thing. But I I have a memory that involves presents. You know, I talked about growing up in a small town. Uh, my mom and dad and I lived in to, uh, there together, and my grandmother and aunt and uncle lived just outside of town. Well, our Christmas Eve tradition was we would pick up my grandmother and we would go drive to the next big town over and we'd drive around and look at all the Christmas lights. Oh, I love it. Oh, that's so, pretty. so much fun. Don't you guys love to do oh, that yeah. too? Yeah. And so we got home and it's late and I'm probably seven or eight years old. Well, we get home and our door is standing open just a little bit, which is terrifying these days, right? But, you know, back then, small town, it wasn't that big a deal. My dad goes in the house and when he comes out, he's like, guys, I think we surprised Santa. <gasps> My little seven-year-old brain goes, come, Santa. So he's like, come on in, come look. We go in. The wood stove in our front room, one door is open, and there is a sooty boot print on yeah. the bricks. Right outside, and this bag of presents just dumped over. Oh, My mind man. was blown. Santa's real, folks, so, I'm yes. telling you. Kids, no matter what your brothers and sisters tell you, Santa is real. Yep. So I was kind of on that believe, don't believe fence right there. Oh. Yeah, hooked. I was in. Oh, we're getting a bunch of comments. Yeah, yeah. Hey, look, our, our, our regulars here. Hey, Jim, good to see you again, Jim. Stacy, y'all are hey, regulars. Hey, Barbara. Oda yep. Band rules. Thanks, Barbara. That's a, oh, look here. Okay, Vicki Martin, my sister. Hi, Vicki. One of her favorite things was... Christmas cookies. All right, so I said earlier we were going to have a Christmas cookie showdown, right? So I don't know if you guys know, both of our families are Christmas cookie families. Now, yep. 
Every family has something they make just for the holiday season. Some families are cake families. Some families are candy families. We're both from cookie families. So when we started talking about a Christmas special, we decided to have a little cookie throwdown showdown. Now, yeah. we have both baked some of our own secret recipe cookies. I say secret recipe. We're actually going to share the recipes, signature recipes. We're going to share those recipes Favorite. with you guys. So we have brought these in, okay. and uh, we're going to do a little taste test. Now, if you guys want to try these for yourself, if you go to our otoband.com slash live, that's our new homepage, scroll all the way to the bottom, and you can download these recipes under, uh, it says Odo Show Extras, I think. So check those recipes out. So uh, I'm going to go first. My family, my grandmother used to bake 15 different types of cookies every Christmas, took cookies to all the neighbors of the family. My mom still does eight That's different. That's so sweet. We have got a lineage of hardcore cookie. Now oh, this wow. recipe is one my wife and I came up with, started with an internet recipe, did a little tweaking of our own. About 10 years ago, these are gingerbread mm. butterscotch Ooh. cookies. These are really tasty. Okay. Gingerbread mm -hmm. and butterscotch uh -huh. are two of my favorites. But you never see them together? But not together. From now on, you will always think of it. So that's what ah. I'm bringing. What are you bringing? Okay. All right. So mine came from my sister and I used to get the, the magazines, the Christmas cookie magazines mm -hmm. that comes out. You know, and usually see them in the checkout aisle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and so one thing that she had pulled out of there were these peppermint melt away, melt away cookies. Ooh. And so she told me about them, and I, I, I made them, and they have stayed in my repertoire for every Christmas. Okay, those look really good. Yes. Okay, guys, so here's what we're going to do. You're going to get to vote on these. Try the recipes if you want to. Um, but we want you to go to our Oda Bandits Facebook page and tell us which one you think looks better here, or if you happen Oda, to bake them, let us Bands. Wait Oda a minute Bandits. now. Not everybody is an Oda Bandit. You're not an Oda Bandit? you got to be an Oda you Bandit, You need to guys. be an Oda Bandit. So look, Oda Bandits is our closed Facebook group. It's our fan page. This is where all of our fans hang out. They talk cleaning. There's a lot of good discussions on there. Mm -hmm. And they also get to know about our products first. They get inside company information. We do polls and questions. It's a lot of fun. So uh, we're going to put a link up there. You click on that. You actually just send us your name and, and email and all, and we will get you access to the Oda Bandits if you're not already on there. That's right. So, uh, we're going to start, okay, grab a cookie. You grab one of those. I'm going to grab one of yours. We're going mm -hmm. to head to head here. What? Right. Uh, Jack said he wants a cookie. All right, Jack, you ready? Jack. Oh. Oh. Oh, <laughs> oh God. Uh, put Wait a, a second. You put should have one of mine. It was softer. Put some ice on that. We'll, we'll take care of you after the show. I think I killed Jack. <laughs> okay. That is the creamiest cookie I have ever eaten. Oh, my goodness. These... These two flavors are really good. It's almost like a salted caramel kind of. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Wow. Yep, I see that. I like I like the butterscotch. Oh, these are good. I and love then the, the spice and the little crumbled peppermint on top. That's that really adds some refreshing. To it. it does. It's got a little crunch. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. This is up to you because yeah. I don't think I can call a winner here. These are good. I'm voting for him. <laughs> We're just gonna sit here and eat cookies. You guys go on about your business. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna have to put this down. Yeah. I can't yeah. talk with a mouthful of cookies. I need something to wash my. Have we any eggnog? Eggnog. 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 Anybody? We need eggnog. No. Egg. So, okay. <laughs> that was our lead into the next segment. You like that? We're so smooth. Eggnog. Let's talk about eggnog. This is one of those things that you either love or you hate about the holidays. And speaking of Oda Bandits, we put up a poll on our Oda Bandits page earlier mm -hmm. this week of whether you like nog or you don't like nog. Do you nog or do you not? And so uh, the poll came back. 18 said no and 13 said yes. So they're sort of pretty And two said not sure because they never tried. Which I can see that. Yeah. I'm, yeah. If, if someone came up to you and said, I have this lovely sweet drink that's made with blended eggs, would you drink that? No, probably not. <laughs> so they are overwhelmingly not. It's all not about presentation. Instead of nog. So uh, what do you think? Are, are, are you for the nog? Are you not or are you nog? I'm nog. You're nog. I'm nog. Okay, so you got to have your eggnog every year. Yes, not every night. Not, not a bunch. I just... I have to have, you know, at least a cup or two during uh -huh, the season, uh -huh. and that way I can check that off of my tradition list. See, I love the way eggnog tastes, but you drink it, yes. it's so, it, I'm full, and it's, I'm bloated, it and it's horrible, so I guess I'm kind of, I could kind of take it or leave it, I guess I'm nognostic, maybe? <laughs> 
knock, knock. <laughs> but you know, this is a very divisive thing. Typically, you either love it or hate it. But no matter whether you really love eggnog or you can't stand it, sooner or later in the holidays, it's going to end up in your house. Somebody's going to have a cup of it. And if you're unlucky, they get a little overnogged and they spill it in your carpet. Mm. Eggnog is one of the worst things. That's There's, not a good one. No, all that milk and eggs and sugar, and it gets sticky, and it's horrible. So a couple of quick tips on cleaning up eggnog if someone uh, happens to nog your carpet <laughs> is you want a spot cleaner that's got enzymes in it. That's the enzymes we've talked about before. It helps break down the milk and uh, all the protein in the spill. Now, our version of that is BioStain uh, an odor remover. You can get it on samsclub.com and homedepot.com. Mm -hmm. But whoever you're looking for, you want one with the enzyme action in it. Now, that's if you have it wet. If you happen to let that eggnog dry in your so carpet. So, in other words, you've had alcohol in that eggnog. And you and maybe forgot about it till the next morning. It's until the next morning that you discover this. A little too much nog in your egg. <laughs> if you let it dry, you've got a horrible mess because it's sticky, it's hard. And uh, the best bet there is what you're going to have to do is get a cloth rag, soak it with as hot a water as you can stand. Don't mm. burn yourself, but really hot water. Put that on the stain and let it soak. What's going to happen is the steam it's is going to soften, soften up that stain and you're going to be able to work with it. Once it's softened up, five or ten minutes, hit it with that enzyme carpet cleaner. You should be denogged and good to go. Oh my God, the, the jokes just keep coming the with nog, the nogs. Right. Nogs. Okay, let's say you have hardwood floors mm. and it dries. I mean, it, it would be an easy cleanup if it's wet, but yeah, what if it dries? Hardwood floor, you wipe it up, it's no big deal. If it mm -hmm. dries, it's a little bit different. You probably don't want to do the steam treatment on real hardwood. Maybe on, on uh, the, the pergo type or the vinyl plank that's popular now, that's okay. But on the real hardwood, you want to get a uh, an oil soap type product. Soak that stain directly in the oil soap five or ten minutes, then use a dull plastic scraper to scrape up the stain, not damaging your floors, get the stain off, polish it out with a cloth rag, and you should be denogged and good to go. Wow. Awesome. We're getting some strong reactions about eggnog here. Yes, we are. Okay, we've, Cava, we've Cava loves. loves the nog. <laughs> Tony Doohan, we love the eggnog, but usually hold the egg, just the nog. Okay, we just no, drink and bourbon. The <laughs> Tony, yeah, okay, fair enough. <laughs> eggnog dump. Kava says nog with bourbon See, too. Haley, hey Haley, Haley's one of our regulars. I had an eggnog dump in the bottom of my freezer just because it's frozen doesn't stop it from stinking. <laughs> oh, that's Man, bad. And that stuff is vicious. <laughs> so we've talked about cookies. We've talked about eggnog. What's the next big milestone for Christmas? I would say drinking it by the tree. The tree, right? You gotta have a Christmas tree if you're gonna do Christmas. So there's two ways you can go with Christmas trees. You can go artificial or you can go real. Now it just so happens one of our Oda bandits asked us a question just this week about cleaning up uh, an artificial tree. Have you got that question there? I do, and you know what? Turns out that I just found out today that she is our Oda bandit of the month, and congratulations to Barbara, Barbara. Bag. Ba ba Barbara's bag. Barbara's on the bag, bag eat. Sorry, Barbara, we're terrible with names, <laughs> but I know she's on the thread. Maybe she'll ch chime in on it. So That's right. Let okay. us hit us with the question. So, so she had posted. She says that she's cleaning out her um, her parents' attic, and they have a high-end artificial Christmas tree mm, nice. that's stored up there. And it's been there for about 10 years. Ooh. Okay, so unfortunately, it wasn't covered or wrapped up, you know, mm, when it was up yeah, there. Yeah, ideally, you want to keep those things wrapped up. And there's been some rodent activity going on up well, there. Typical of an attic, yep. Right, so she says she's not sure how much the tree's been affected. It looks okay. Okay. So she's wondering <laughs> is if, she, if can she disinfect it with Odaban and be able to, to use the tree. Clean it, put it back in service. You know, this is actually a great use for Odaban. You know, anytime you've got an artificial tree, it's been stored in the attic, even if you do wrap it up, they typically come down a little musty, a little funky. And so you want to take a Odaban at five ounces per gallon, if you're using the concentrator, just buy the RTU. Mist the tree, set it up, you know, spread everything out, mist it heavily, and then let it dry for 24 hours before you either plug it in or decorate it if it's if it's a, an unlit tree. Now the trick there is you got to make sure and let it dry. That way you're not plugging in anything wet. That's kind of obvious. But Odaban's a great way to clean and freshen up and deodorize those trees coming down out of the attic. It's a great use for it. Barbara, thanks for your question and thanks for being an Odaban. We appreciate it. Okay, let's yep. see what else we've got here going on. Bag it. So the other option you can go with, of course, like some of the people in our thread here are talking about, is uh, real trees. Now, real trees, you know, we used to do a real tree, and I loved them growing up. They smelled so good, you would always get, you know, the, the smell when you walk in the house. Mm -hmm. 
But they're such a pain, I could never keep one alive. You know, halfway through Christmas, it's a brown bottle brush, it's a stick, stuff's falling it's off fire of hazard. it. It is. I, well, I know you're a gardener, right? Mm -hmm. and do you have any tips about keeping the the, uh, the uh, real trees fresh and alive through Christmas? Well, I, you know, I can go based on just like personal experience for the most part. Well, let us have Because yeah, we, we had one for, for years. We would always get a, mm -hmm. a, a real tree. But I've learned that you know, and I've tried the whole put an aspirin in the water, yeah. and they talk about that. bleach and, and soda sugar. and sugar and yeah, a bunch of. Does any of that do stuff. any good? No. Ah, uh, okay. No. So just no. water. No, and the consensus is is that you know these these things have been tried uh -huh. by professionals. People, they. yes, yes, and uh, you know they, they just say keep them watered, keep, keep them, them watered. So my recommendation and what has always worked for me is to take the tree uh -huh. and as soon as you get it home either put it in the stand you know put it up against the house a you know tree something Go ahead and stand hold, it up hold let a stand it, it up yeah. right and hose it down with water oh. cuz you're going to rehydrate that tree I would never, um, I guess it's like raining in the forest. I wouldn't have thought of that. Right. Okay. You know, I mean, it absorbs through the needles and everything. So okay. that's the first step you want to do. Uh -huh. um, then you'll also want to go ahead and make like a one inch cut at the bottom, even though they probably have done that for you. Like if you got it at a big box store, or if you yeah. went to a tree farm and cut it down, still, once you get home, cut it again, because that is actually okay. starting to dry in that little bit of time, it starts to dry. I've heard with that. that you sap, gotta... Yeah, you have to do that. So, and if you can't cut it at home, rough it up really good, you know, with, with okay. steel wool or, you know, whatever you've so got. So fresh cut it. right into the into the stand, Put get it, it wet. Put it into the water, exactly. Gotcha. And another tip that I've learned that I didn't know at the time, but I've since heard, is that to run a, hum a humidifier oh. in the same room where the Christmas tree oh, is. I would not have thought of that, and but that makes good sense. And that's probably something really good for people up north who have, like, the wood burning stoves and yeah. the furnaces where you know the heat is really dry and there's not a whole humid a lot of humidity yeah it keeps it keeps the tree humid well yeah. that makes sense to me yeah you know that was keeping one alive was always I would forget to check the water the water would go dry the tree would seal up and it'd be dead in a week uh, it was I love the way it smells but it was just a huge pain now I'm like plug it in you know the other thing was always they make a huge mess you got needles everywhere and you got sap uh, you know, that was the first thing I learned about dealing with a live tree is the sap is the issue. As soon as I started touching the tree off the car, sand it up in the yard, any of that, gloves. Jersey knit gloves, something you can throw away when you get sap all over them. That way you got sap on the gloves, not on your hands, because if you've got sap on your hands, you've got sap all over your house. There's no two ways about it. And then you put it up and they're going to drop needles everywhere. Now, speaking of sap, when it drops those needles on the carpet, don't just run over them with your vacuum with the beater brush because they might have sap on them. The trees leak a little bit now and then. And the beater brush <laughs> on your uh, vacuum cleaner is just going to smear that into your carpet. You don't want that. Use the, uh, the attachments, the tubes and all that come with your vacuum to suck the needles up. I was thinking about this too along those same lines. Everybody now has uh, robotic vacuum cleaners, right? And we've all seen the images and the stuff online about the vacuum cleaners through the dog poop and it tracks poop all over the house. Ugh. Imagine if that was tree sap. Yeah. You may, if you have a robotic vacuum cleaner, want to turn that off if it's in a room with a tree. Just a thought. I mean, thankfully it doesn't smell like, mm, you know, no. if it was a dog. But the thing is, is that that you can use a, a carpet extractor. Right. But with sap... You can't just use soap and water and clean it no. that way. So how would you get that okay. out of the carpet? So if you got sap on the carpet and you need to get it out, what you need is rubbing alcohol. Go to the store and get the 90% if you can, not the 70% that like most people sell. Get High the 90. Test. High test. <laughs> what you're going to do is soak a cotton ball with the alcohol, put it directly on the sap, kind of work it around. What's going to happen is the alcohol is going to break down the sticky resins in the sap. Now it may take several treatments, but you're going to see that sap start to break down and get crumbly. And you can just sort of flake it out of the carpet and uh, get together the loose pieces instead of it being sick, sticky. So uh, that's your tip there for, for getting it out of carpet. Now, if you happen to have hardwood floors, here we're back to hardwood floors again. That's my question is how would well, you, you do that? You guys have got the nice hardwood, yeah. I know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so if you've got hardwood floors, again, you're going to turn to the oil soap type products. In this uh -huh. case, you're not making it brittle. You're actually softening it up. You put the oil soap on the sap, let it soak for five or ten minutes, come back with your scraper, work it off. It's kind of the same thing as the sticky eggnog mess. So... In other words, if you're going to, if you know that you already have sap on your hardwood right. floors. Right, if you've 
Yeah. That's that's your target if you're going to spill your eggnog because <laughs> there you can take care of both of them at the same it's, time. <laughs> it's always easy to uh, be efficient with your messes if you can. It simplifies the cleaning process. <laughs> So that's our tips on, on Christmas tree sap. And, and the needles, the other time you get needles everywhere is when you're taking the tree out of the house. I would invariably be like, be carrying a tree out, run into a door <laughs> frame, and of it, yeah. boom, there's an explosion of needles all over the room. Never fails. So I decided what I'd start doing. We had, I had an old sheet that I kept as like a drop cloth. I would wrap the tree up in the sheet and then carry it outside. That makes, way you didn't drop any needles. That, that makes it much easier. And I actually was looking around this year, there are companies making bags specifically for tree extraction from your home where you put the bag on as a tree skirt and at the end of the season, once you undecorate the tree, you just pull the bag up over the tree and seal it off. Seems really easy. But I'm cheap, and I'd probably still use a sheet. I, I would probably, like, hang it up on the door, and there'd be a hole, and the next thing you know, there's all this. Boom, needles <laughs> everywhere, and you're right back where you started. Now, once you get it outside, remember, guys, that uh, disposing of the Christmas tree is important. A lot of your municipalities have specific rules. Uh, you want to look for somewhere that's recycling it, chipping it up, and making it useful. Uh, and some of the local Home Depot stores, they individually set up programs that do this. So check with your Home Depot store for recycling. And, you know, when I was a kid, we just take them out and throw them in the lake. Did you guys do that in Florida? Uh, we didn't, but it yeah, was, I could, it was commonly done. We, we had the silver sixties tree, you know, for a while. Uh, the tinfoil one. You <laughs> yeah. don't want to throw that in a lake. So yeah. we would always take the trees out and throw them in the lake, figure it makes good fish habitat. And I asked a ranger at a local lake this not too many years ago. And he said, look guys, don't throw the trees in the lake. We've got more trees than we do fish in the lake these days. So maybe don't do that. Well, you know, Another idea on that is that you could probably go out there and fish for your next year Christmas Catch, tree. It's going to look horrible when you pull it up, though. That's what spray ca spray paint's for. Spray paint? Okay, guys, there you heard it here there first. Fish your tree out of the lake, $6 can of spray paint, you're <laughs> off and running. You heard it here first. <laughs> you're welcome. Avoid, Heather says avoid sap with the artificial tree. Ah. And the other, I just take my tree down and plug it in, and I'm done. It's fantastic. <laughs> hey, Charlene. Shared from Wisconsin. Wow, I bet it's chilly in Wisconsin this hey, evening. Hey, Nicole, yeah, yeah. Excellent, getting some good comments. I'm digging this. You know, it's such Me a great too. way to start Christmas, hanging out with you guys. In fact, you know, I think we love you guys so much, we're going to give away some presents. Mm -hmm. Presents is always Christmas, That's right? right? That's where I started That's this right. whole thing was with presents. So um, I don't know if you guys saw our last episode. It was the Black Friday episode. We were in such a rush to get back out shopping. That we left it to our, our director and our tech guys. To go ahead and get to, our, to, our names. Yeah, to pick out the names for our winners. Well, here we are, and we still don't have any names to announce until this evening. So uh, we're going to steal their Christmas presents and give them to you guys. So from our <laughs> Black Friday show, we'll start with our, our winners from last time. Uh, you got some names for us there? I do. All right, I let's do. give away some okay, stuff. Okay, we have a Canadian, Ooh. Heather Brown. Heather, congratulations, Thank you for Heather. Watching all the way from Canada. All from the frozen north. Who else have we got? That's right. Okay. And then from Kentucky, we have Michelle Walker. Michelle, congratulations. congratulations. Got friends from Kentucky as a member. Uh -huh. And from my home state, Florida, we have Jay Stone. Jay, congratulations. All right, guys. So if you heard your name on there, send us a private message. Let us know your shipping address. Don't tell us on the public feed. And we will be sending a special gift out to you guys. Uh, from the Black Friday sales. Now, this is a, a whole thing where, for presents here, and we got a holiday show. And so, just like Christmas, we are going to make you guys wait to win some Christmas presents. But what we want you to do is continue commenting on this. Tell us whether or not uh, you like the cookie recipes. Vote in that cookie uh, cookie challenge, cookie showdown. Cookie I'm showdown. I'm missing my. Jack's going to yell at me later <laughs> if he's awake. That cookie hit him hard. Uh, <laughs> Vote in the cookie challenge, and we're going to pick out some of those folks to win prizes that we will announce next time. So you're going to have to wait for your Christmas presents because that's how Santa makes us that's do it. That's right. you got to wait until Christmas. Now, we've had a great time hanging out with you guys. We hope you've enjoyed our Christmas party. So until we see you again, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Make, make life, life fresh. fresh. And we're going to leave you guys with a few uh, bloopers on this next reel. Here's a little Christmas present from us to you. Enjoy this. I know we had a good time <laughs> shooting it. Merry Christmas, Merry guys. Christmas. See you next time. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. How are we How doing? We gonna Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. That sounds horrible. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry. Merry Christmas. Christmas. You're watching the up. <laughs> that is what I'm going to be about. So put on the. Put <laughs> <laughs> You're watching the Ono Show live Christmas party. <laughs> <laughs> Why? 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 Why
Stay tuned and you could win some presents from Odoban. Oh. <laughs> hey guys, you're watching. That was horrible. Hey, hey guys. guys. <laughs> hey guys. Spread some Christmas cheer. <laughs> Spread that Christmas cheer. <laughs> Christmas cheer. Spread that Christmas cheer. <laughs> the show starts now. Now, now, now. Join us, join us, join us. Now, now, now. Formal. Yeah.